Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about QTL associated with field resistance to CVSD, cassava brown streak disease, in the context of the genetic relationships among genotypes. So this is really a compilation of evidence from five biparental mapping populations and whole genome sequence information. Um, this, I'm going to be talking about a component of work that was conducted under the BMGF funded project between November 2009 and 2016. The main collaborators on this project were the Tanzanian Agricultural Research Institute, TARI, um, and there were three, two PhD students from TARI, Esther Masumba and Fortunes Kinga, and a PhD student from Kenya, Inosta Zanzuki, who worked on this. Um, we were also worked with UC Berkeley um, and the University of Arizona and Dow AgroSciences through Steve Roundsley. Um, uh, a major objective of this project was to identify QTL associated with tolerance to CBSD using five biparental mapping populations. The overall goal of this for West Africa was in, to enable breeding using markers in the absence of the disease, as there is obviously no disease in West Africa at the moment. Uh, in East Africa, uh, where we can challenge populations to CBSD, the overall goal was to enable selection at the seedling stage and thereby dramatically reduce population sizes, saving money and adding precision through marker-assisted selection. Clearly, these are overall goals, and the objective was not to meet these goals within the project timeframe. Um, here are the populations that uh, we, we developed. Um, a biparental population is slightly different to a GWAS population that many people are using these days. You have to construct a population from a, a resistant parent and a susceptible parent. Um, for the target uh, disease that you're working on, in our case, CBSD. Um, in our case, the resistant uh, uh, parent was the female, um, and the male was resistant to CMD, but susceptible to CBSD. Uh, we used male parents AR3780 and Albert. Uh, you need a population size of at least 100, that would be the bare minimum. And you can see have, we have populations of 240 up to 217. These are good sizes and effectively increase the number of recombinations, which should give us greater resolution. So I want to introduce you to the CBSD female parents. So first of all, we have Nachinyaya and NDL06132. So Nachinyaya is a land race from Northern Mozambique southern, southeastern Tanzania. Um, it was reported as being resistant or tolerant in 1995. When we started the project, NDL06132 was thought to be a self of NDL90-34 and was selected in Nali and Delhi research station where crosses were being done. But as a result of some resequencing work that was done during the project by UC Berkeley, and identity by descent analysis, uh, which you can see in these blue uh, circles in the diagram, um, that this was not the case, and that NDL06132 was in fact a full or half sieve of Nachinyaya. We know that Nachinyaya was actually in the crossing block in Nali and Delhi. And also, there's no wild species introgression in either of these genotypes. This will be uh, the, the relevance of this will become apparent later on in the presentation. Um, so another parent was Namikonga. This is an Amani hybrid, 46106-27, a third back cross of Maniac Glaziovii, and mentioned by Jennings and Hillox as one of the best Amani hybrids. For those of you who are not familiar, there was a breeding program in Amani in Tanga province, Tanzania, in the 1930s and 40s, where Manioc esculenta was crossed with a couple of wild species, including Manioc glaziovia. In Kenya, Namikonga is also known as Kaleso. 
Interestingly, resequencing data shows us that it was a parent offspring relationship with TMEB117 or TMEB693, which have been seen to be identical um, apart from response to CMD. Um, and that genotype actually also appears to be very widely distributed in Africa. At one time, um, C TMEB117 was reported as being highly resistant or immune to CBSC. Uh, the group at Berkeley uh, managed to map the Maniot Glaziovii introgression segments in Nami Conga, which you can see at the bottom of the screen in uh, the green blocks. Um, here you can see the Namikonga and TMEB117 parent offspring relationship. Then we have Kiroba, which shows sometimes severe leaf symptoms, but it doesn't show root symptoms, even under high disease pressure. It has been known as a land race from around the Dar es Salaam area but introgression segments of Maniac glaziovii have been identified from resequencing data. It does have a close relationship with tree cassava, which is a Maniac esculenta Maniac glaziovii hybrid. It is therefore possible that it is an Amani derivative. Indeed, its vigor, disease resistance, and yield indicate the involvement of a breeder. The last resistant or tolerant genotype was AR40-6, which was actually imported from SEAT in the, around the year 2000. Unfortunately, we don't have reliable long-term data on the performance of this genotype. So here's just some of the, the symptoms of the parents. This is after two years high disease pressure in Tanzania. You can see Albert on the left, severe root necrosis, whereas Kiroba and Nami Konga are barely showing symptoms at all. So we developed these five mapping populations. Our crosses were done at the sugarcane research station at Kibaha in Tanzania, and seed was also germinated there. F1 populations were grown out in Mutokora in central Tanzania for one year of seedling multiplication and a disease-free or extremely low pressure disease pressure. So during multiplication of the planting material, leaves were sampled for DNA extraction and genotyping was conducted using GBS um, by UC Berkeley. So this was during the very early days of GBS, long before DartSeq, and you can see the number of SNPs we got was relatively small, uh, from 2,000 up to 5,000. Um, nowadays, you can get 10 times as many SNPs. This was also before we had any physical maps, so we had to generate a, gener a genetic linkage map. We did this using JoinMAP 4.1 and the max maximum likelihood algorithm for cross-pollinated populations. Anyway, we managed to map this number of SNPs on largely 18 linkage groups, which corresponded with the correct number of chromosomes. The length of the map was around 1,800 um, 1, centimorgans. So these populations actually formed the basis of the consensus map and led to the first chromosome scale genome assembly for cassava. Um, this was published by the International Cassava Genetic Map Consortium in 2015. So phenotyping was done over two years in two locations, Chambezi and Nali and Delhi, using an alpha lattice design and five plants per plot with two replicates. Um, the main Traits we scored were CBSD above ground, that's foliar symptoms at three, six, and nine months after planting on a scale of one to five. Uh, and for CBSD root necrosis, we scored this on a qualitative scale, one to five at 12 months after planting, but also a quantitative scale. Uh, for the quantitative scoring, we actually designed this cutting machine to cut the roots into equal sized portions. We then turn them up on their end and we photograph them. So I think we did something like five roots per plant from each plant in the plot. So this was a huge amount of work. Um, each photo was then analyzed using image J. 
the total area of the route was measured, and then the non-infected area. This was used to calculate the infected area. So for QTL detection, we used the mean trait score for each genotype across the replicates in each year um, and site. And these were calculated and used for the QTL mapping. Inclusive composite interval mapping was used for QTL detection using the software GACD, which is the integrated genetic analysis software of clonal F1 and double cross populations. And this software is freely available. Um, we used a significance threshold of LOD 2.5 or 3, um, depending on the population. A score of 3 indicates that the likelihood in favor of linkage is a thousand times greater than the likelihood against linkage. A QTL was considered consistent when it occurred in two or more sites or seasons in any one population. So this is the best way I had of illustrating QTL across populations um, that I could think of. I'm sure there are other ways of doing it, but I don't know of any at the moment. Um, so you can see the 18 chromosomes along the top and the resistant uh, parents down the side. Um, if there's a light green bar, this represents a QTL associated with foliar symptoms and the dark brown are associated with root necrosis. So where there are split bars, this indicates the QTL is associated with both root necrosis and foliar symptoms. Remember, each QTL was significant in two site season combinations within each population. So in total, we detected 33 QTL, four associated with both root necrosis and foliar symptoms, two, 22 associated with foliar symptoms only, Two of these folia QTL were across populations. Um, seven QTL associated with root necrosis, but only one of these was consistent across populations. There's also some very interesting QTL found in Kiroba and Namikonga that do not occur across populations. But as we have seen from the identity by descent analysis, there is no strong compelling evidence why this should be the case. Whereas in Nachinyaya and NDL06132 are full or half sieves, so you would expect more consistency across population. So for Namikonga, I think the QTL and chromosome 2 is really interesting for foliar symptoms, um, as it occurred in all sites and seasons, and chromosome 12 in Kiroba for root necrosis had occurred in three sites for seasons. So the results from these populations, from four of these populations have been published um, and you can see them here. Uh, so going into a little bit more detail um, on uh, chromosome four, you, where you have three QTL. On the left arm, you have a QTL shared by NDL, Machinaya, and Kiroba from 2.4 million base pairs to 3.7 million base pairs, a gap of about 1.3 million base pairs. Um, we have some pretty high log scores and up to 70% of the percentage variance explained in the first season in Nalian Delhi. The second QTL covers an area of about 600 thousand base pairs and explains up to 41% of variation, again in Nalian Delhi. A third QTL just occurs in Kuroba um, and about 2.6 million base pairs. Chromosome 11, the left-hand arm, which seems to be really important in terms of root necrosis. This appears in Namikonga, NDL and Nachinyaya and in a total of eight populations. The maximum distance in this is 3.8 million base pairs, but the other QTL give you much smaller areas, such as 25,000 base pairs. We get some pretty high PBEs as well. Chromosome 18 crops up in all populations. Four populations show this QTL for root necrosis and two for foliar symptoms. 
The span is large from 4.2 to 9 million base pairs, but individual QTL win within this region are much narrower. Um, QTL for rutinocosis are consistent across seven population site seasons from 6.3 million to 9 million base pairs. Another QTL governing foliar symptoms appears in AR40-6. So one question we had was, are the QTL regions in Namikonga derived from Maniac glaziovia, glaziovii from Amani breeding program? So we brought together uh, a QTL map of Namikonga at the top, together with a map of the introgression regions of Maniac glaziovii in bright green, based on resequencing data, and we found no overlap. So we conclude that QTL do not appear to come from Maniac glaziovii. We did the same thing with Kiroba, but here we do find some overlap. It is possible that foliar tolerance observed in Kiroba may be derived from the wild species Maniac glaziovii. So in conclusion, we have 33 QTL associated with either CBSD root necrosis, foliar symptoms, or both across the five populations. We clearly found more QTL associated with foliar resistance than root necrosis. It is clear that tolerance to root necrosis and foliar symptoms is quantitative. This is not so easy to manipulate, but good news for durability of field resistance. There are opportunities for QTL stacking or pyramiding. Some QTLs are consistent across populations, um, and some of this can be explained by shared ancestry, such as Nachinaya and NDL uh, with chromosome 4 for leaf symptoms for foliar symptoms, chromosome 11 and 18 for root symptoms. Nami Congo also adds to this group for root necrosis in, in chromosome 11 and 18. Tolerance to CBSD symptoms in Nami Congo does not appear to come from Maniac glaziovia, and QTL for tolerance to foliar symptoms on chromosome 18 in Kiroba may be derived from Maniac. Glaziovii. One of the challenges here is obviously prioritizing amongst these 33 QTLs. Um, priority QTL for identification of marker linkages of portfolio, I would say chromosome 4, um, which are consistent and occur in six site seasons. Also for Namikonga, chromosome 2. For root necrosis, QTL occur on both chromosomes 11 and 18 in three populations um, and are identified in five and eight seasons each. In addition, QTL in Kiroba on chromosomes 5 and 12 should be considered. Four QTL influence both necrosis and foliar symptoms and should be considered. Namikonga, chromosome 2 as above, and Kiroba, 11 and 15, as well as 18. The level of tolerance in AR40-6 is less understood, so perhaps QTL in the genotype should be of lower priority. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for listening to this sometimes complicated story of QTL uh, for CBSD resistance in Tanzania. And I would just like to add that I think Edward Kanju has done a great job in accumulating and stacking these QTL into varieties such as KBH 2016B504 and 521, which Stefan Winter has found very difficult to infect with various strains of CBSD. Um, so there are, however, other varieties that we may have missed, such as Kibaha, which have been used in the crossing scheme, and it would be good to look at some of these QTL regions in terms of commonalities among haplotypes. Enough said. I'd like to thank everybody who's been involved in this work, um, particularly Jeff Mercamilo and his team, and Alan Luisa Garcia Oliveira, who assisted as a postdoc in the last couple of years of the project. Again, thanks very much to the donor, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for funding. Thank you.